I'm a nurse practitioner here at UCSF Mission Bay Campus and I'm here to speak with you about the things that you should anticipate um, after getting a prostatectomy as well as the items that you should notify your urology team if they should arise when you are either at home or even in the hospital. So first thing is I want to make sure to point out to you is that you will be given a handout. This handout likely will have been given to you in the outpatient setting as well as in the inpatient setting. And I want to make sure to reference this handout to you. It's a handout that will go over the frequently asked questions that patients all, um, often have after having a prostatectomy. So you'll see me reference this as well as you'll see on, the, on your um, television screen the highlighted points I want to make sure that you are aware of. First item I'd like to review with you in the handout um, is the column that says what to expect that is normal that you wouldn't anticipate that's normal after a prostatectomy. As you can tell, this column has a significant amount of items that you would think were abnormal, but they are not. So the first item would be, the tip of your penis may get irritated. How to help prevent the irritation is that you should, when you clean the catheter um, twice a day with soap, water, and a washcloth, at the point where the catheter is inserted into the penis, um, you should, after you're done cleaning, use um, water-based lubricant that you put at the tip of the penis just to help with lubrication and to prevent chafing and prevent the irritation. If you do get the irritation and the water-based lubricant is not um, sufficient for you, then I would recommend using the, the lidocaine gel that you are given in the hospital as well as if you would like a prescription for home, you'll be given the prescription for home. The other item to note that's very normal, that you wouldn't think is normal, is that you're likely to have small blood clots come through the Foley catheter after the procedure. And um, the key thing with the small blood clots, they need to be small, like little flux of clot that's kind of passing through the catheter tubing with no problems. That nothing to be alarmed about. The size of this, um, the clots are very small. The risk of you obstructing your catheter is very low. So that's another thing that you shouldn't be alarmed about. You will note the clots will happen oftentimes with movement or straining to have a bowel movement, which you shouldn't do anyways, um, or um, coughing or a, abrupt movement. Since the catheter is rubbing across the surgical field, um, anything that causes the catheter indirectly create pressure or friction at the surgical field will lead to having some clots coming through your Foley catheter. Other item to talk about is that your urine is going to change in color um, as well as in consistency. So first thing before we get into that, it's really important that you know where to look. I don't want you looking in your Foley bag your urine over time gets more sediment as well as it gets really dark and often can scare people. So don't look in the bag because if you look in the bag, you're going to make yourself scared. When you look at the catheter and you're looking for what your urine actually looks like and when um, and the consistency as well as the color, you're looking in the actual tubing of the Foley catheter. And in the tubing, you should be able to always be able to see through the tubing. Now, you're going to have urine color changes like I mentioned. It could be water-like, lemonade, cranberry colored urine. All those are completely acceptable. Um, we prefer water-like urine. Um, if, you're, if you have um, lemonade-like colored urine, that means that you're a bit dehydrated and you need to drink some more fluids. If you have cranberry colored urine, means that you may have overdone your activity or strained to have a bowel movement and that triggered you to have a little bleeding at the surgical bed that which caused some of your urine color changes to look like cranberry juice. If any other color besides water-like urine you see in your Foley catheter tubing, I want you to drink lots of fluids. When you drink lots of fluids, you're flushing that catheter out and you 
um, won't have to be, um, you won't have to be concerned about having um, sediment um, or as well as clots building up that could then obstruct the catheter. Um, next item to talk about is, um, as I briefly touched, um, that you're going to have some sediment in your Foley catheter. Um, this could look cloudy. Um, and the key thing is that it needs to be very brief. So a very brief period of time, it's very common to have some sediment or cloudiness to your urine quality. And again, this is urine in your Foley tubing. However, if it's over a sustained period of time, after like an hour or two of drinking lots of fluids, that's something you should let us know about. However, if it's just a brief period of time, you drink your fluids and clear up your urine, there's no problem. You don't have to be alarmed about anything. Next thing to talk about, you're likely gonna have leakage around the Foley catheter. It's not a perfect plumbing system, um, unfortunately. It's very intermittent, brief periods of time, you may not even have this problem. However, I want you to be aware that if you do encounter some leakage around your catheter, it does not mean your catheter is not working. It's working perfectly fine. It just means that you may have caused a little bit too much pressure on your system. And to relieve that pressure, it's a good idea to avoid um, overactivity as well as avoid straining when you're on a, um, a bowel movement. As well, it's a good idea that if you're having bladder spasms to be mindful of it and take care of the problem, which I will get into um, briefly. Um, if once you relieve those items, the leakage likely won't be a problem for you at that time. So another item we should go over is you're likely gonna have bruising. Uh, you just had surgery and um, the, item, the areas that you're going to have the bruising is likely at the access points for the surgery where, are, where the port sites are. And that's all along the um, middle of the abdomen. Usually the largest amount of bruising is right where the, um, right next to the belly button, the umbilicus incision. Um, and that incision tends to be a little thesaurus as well because that is where the prostate is removed um, at the end of the procedure. Bruising also can happen in the scrotum and the penis because that's a dependent position for gentlemen. As well, the surgery was done down there. Even though they have the access points here, the surgery wasn't up here. It was all down um, where your prostate was. And so you'll likely have some bruising in your scrotum, in your penis, um, and you can sometimes get bruising in your back. So one thing to be sure that you are aware of, if you note that you're having bruising, doesn't mean alarms should go off in your head. This is very common to encounter after surgery. The time frame that bruising usually shows up is three to five days after surgery. As well, when you do get bruised, there's often swelling associated with it. So don't be alarmed if you note your scrotum, your penis are bruised as well as swollen. It's very common. As well as swollen in, um, across the, the abdomen where the port sites are and sometimes swelling a little bit in the back. So this is very common. Um, and again, it shows up in three to five days after surgery. And it takes about two weeks if you do see the bruising to go away. Another item I like to go over with you is that you're likely going to have a low grade temperature, 9900 degrees. Um, it's very common to have that after a surgery. Your body's all revved up. Um, best thing to do if you do get a low grade temperature, um, be sure you're up and moving around and active and doing your deep breathing. Because often the trigger for the low grade temperature is inactivity and with activity that helps the low grade temperature go away. And the last two items are, one, it's very common for people to gain anywhere from five to 20 pounds in weight gain from surgery. This is associated with fluid weight gain, and don't be alarmed by that. It's very temporary, and um, usually it's about a day or two before your body um, starts let go of that fluid. 
the main reason why you had that fluid weight gain is due to your body when it's stressed likes to hold on to fluid until it's not stressed any longer and then at that time the body likes to release the fluid and you'll get back to your normal weight so don't be alarmed five to twenty pound weight gain is very temporary after the surgery and the last item is you're likely to have some bloody yellow like discharge even kind of brown like discharge at the tip of the penis where the catheter is inserted um, like I mentioned earlier in the beginning it's a good idea to use water and a washcloth and some soap and clean twice a day at the tip of the penis and all you do is just clean off the residue at the tip of the penis and um, you're good to go so don't be alarmed by having discharge it doesn't mean you have an infection at all it's very common